Percival is one of the highest consistent DPS characters in the game, and one of the characters I have had the most fun playing so far, thanks to a likely unintended tech that allows him to cancel some of his skills early into a dodge to still get the quicker cooldown on his primary damaging move, Schlocked. Even if it's unintended, I think it's a lot of fun, so I hope it never gets patched. Most of his playstyle will revolve around using this move as much as possible and how he can chain it into it as much as he can, while still outputting a high amount of damage, which you can hopefully see here. In this video, I want to discuss Percival, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some of his strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. My first video on this game had much better reception than I expected, and if positive reception continues, I'll likely try to cover every character in the future, as well as do some more general gameplay guides, so if you do enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So, starting off with the basics here, Percival is a melee DPS type character who wants to deal as much damage as possible. As I already mentioned earlier, your main source of damage is your charge attack, Schlocked. This does a very high amount of damage that can easily hit between 1 to 2 million per use, depending on setup. His two support skills you can see at the bottom both reinforce this idea. So, foe's attacks will not interrupt you while you're charging this move, and for Adrenaline Rush, the charge speed of Schlocked is greatly increased after a combo finisher. I can't exactly remember if this effect is unlocked from a mastery, but Schlocked can also be used as a parry where if you release the fully charged version of the move right when foes are about to attack you or about to hit you, you'll immune the damage and still get your attack off. You can also move around while charging the move. If you do not use the move after a combo finisher or after a damaging art, your charge speed is significantly slower, so primarily you'll want to use it with a much faster charge speed to maximize your damage. Speaking of maximizing damage, Percival's regular attacks, which I have bound to the X button, are a bit slow and don't do that much damage, and that's where the unintended tech is going to come in. So by using certain arts with Percival and immediately canceling them into a dodge roll, you can immediately get the faster cooldown for Schlocked. This can give you more DPS than using regular attacks when you have your other damaging arts on cooldown. The art I've chosen for this purpose is Mocked, because there is a great visual indicator for if you did it right in the form of a very brief stout heart buff. The timing is pretty tight in that you need to immediately tap dodge after pressing the button the art is assigned to, in my case B. If you tap dodge before the art or try to press both at the same time, you'll likely just dodge without using the art and get the slower charge. Tap the dodge too late and you'll use up the art cooldown and be unable to continue doing this. You also have to be holding down the R button so I usually use my middle finger to tap ZR after pressing B, then release the R button so I can hold down Y and charge slocked. It's not super mechanically intensive, but it does take some practice to understand the timing and get it consistently. Ideally, you'll also want to be releasing Schlocked as soon as the full charge finishes and using the art immediately after Schlocked fully connects to maximize your damage. The timing for these also takes some practice since if you cancel Schlocked before fully touching the ground, you don't get the full value of your supplementary damage bonus for some reason. That should cover the basics of combat with Percival, so let's get into setup. As per usual, my setup is more focused on late game rating and post game, so keep that in mind. For your weapon, you're going to want the Terminus weapon and ideally have it maxed out for the strong bonus effects that it offers. Catastrophe is an absolutely fantastic ability that increases your damage cap by 100% and your attack by 50% as long as you're under 45,000 health. It also comes with another 5 levels of damage cap and Sigil Booster, which boosts the level and effects of all of your Sigils by 1. If you don't have this weapon yet, the Crit Damage weapon or the Ascended weapon should work just fine. If for some reason you're unaware, the reason damage cap is such a great stat is because it's the absolute best way you have to increase your maximum damage in this game, over stacking damage multipliers, since every character has individual caps for every move to ensure you can't trivialize content, I assume. As such, I have maxed this stat out with the other sigils that I have. Now, for this current setup, this is not the absolute maximum damage you can possibly have, like you might have seen at the very beginning of this video, but it's one that offers a lot while also giving you some good support effects that should be more useful in more scenarios. For maximum damage, I would be running three supplementary attack bonuses instead of just the one that you see here, along with Glass Cannon, which increases your damage cap even further, but has a very nasty negative effect you don't want in most situations. I should also probably mention that I do not think this is 100% optimal. You can definitely get sub-traits in better positions on some of these sigils, and you can also get better overmastery bonuses, so you can actually hit 100% crit rate without needing two bonuses on that. But regardless, I think this gives a pretty good mix of very high damage, good team support, and just strong utility sub-traits that'll help you out in most situations. So first up, we have Lord's Ambition. This is one of his unique sigils. I think this is the least useful of the two, but the reason I'm running it is because it also has a damage cap attached to it, just to make sure I hit that damage cap and also can have a decent bonus effect along with that. 
So this will restore a bit of health and boost your attack power after a charged parry. Now, with how much damage Percival has automatically in the sigils I'm running, you'll usually be able to hit damage cap without needing that attack boost anyway. But I guess the health restore can be a little nice after landing a charge parry, but overall you probably do not need this specific bonus effect if you have something that you can run that might be better overall. Lord's Procession is a much more useful bonus effect though, because that is going to give you a movement speed boost while charging Schlock and also boost Schlock's damage cap even further. The full amount of this is a 50% damage cap move, and that is once again your strongest move that you have, so definitely have this. The other trait that I have on this is critical hit rate up, because once again, I do not have any critical hit rate overmastery bonus, so I need two critical hit rates to hit 96% critical hit rate. Overall, really, really good sigil here that I have. Probably better than even having the awakened sigil, just because I think critical hit rate's more useful in this specific situation. Obviously, if you have the overmastery bonus, then you would not need this. I have a damage cap plus five. This is not fully maxed out yet, because I only have so many materials with how much I've been able to farm, but it has cascade on it. So based on everyone I'm talking to, this still doesn't always work properly depending on the character, but there has been some note that it does affect Percival's buff art at least, but it doesn't seem to have a noticeable effect on some of his other arts that he has. Or I, sh I should call them skills in this game, sorry. So I'm running this, I don't know if it's the most optimal here, but it's still a decent effect if it does work, so hopefully it'll be fixed in the future if it's not working entirely properly. My other damage cap 5 plus that I have underneath it has improved dodge. I like this as a bonus ability and utility skill a lot. This gives you up to 6 or 7 dodges you can use in a row and also allows you to have a higher window for foes to miss and also makes it a little easier to get perfect dodges, I think. I really like this ability. Dodging is really good in this game, especially when uh, you're using dodge a lot with Percival since you're wanting to maximize your slot to damage and you're canceling your art into dodge. So very, very good ability because of that. Quick cooldown is just a really strong ability in general, once again attached to the final damage cap 5 plus to make sure I hit the cap on that. Quick cooldown lets all your skills come off cooldown faster, you can use your skills more often. Percival has really good skills, at least the ones that I have equipped. Quick charge. This has a very nice beneficial effect on Percival as well because it boosts the effect of your charge speed. I'm only running one of these, some people run two from what I have seen. It gives you 21% faster charge time essentially when you are able to run one of these, and it can go up to 30%. Or, it's more like reduction, but you get the point. It's still faster than normal, allows you to move, use more schlocks, allows you to cancel stuff faster, allows you to use your combo more often. Good ability, works pretty well on him because of that, since there's only so many ways you can increase your damage, so having something like this allows you to get a, a minor DPS increase, no matter how small it is. It also has Potion Hoarder level 15 on it. Potion Hoarder is probably the best utility skill in the game. Gives you a lot of additional potions, gives you a lot of safety and utility, gives you more blue potions so you can build Link Gauge faster. Run Potion Hoarder. It's fantastic. Critical Hit Rate up 5. This is mainly for the Critical Hit Rate, but it also has the Stamina bonus effect. Stamina is one of the best attack increases you can have in the entire game, especially because you'll be at high HP most of the time. Gives like a 50% attack boost at full health or something like that. It's really, really strong. Link Together... I really like this ability because it helps your entire party, gives you more link gauge gain, boosts your link attack, skybound arts, and chain bursts. So just a really useful skill for the entire party, and it also has quick cooldown attached to it to give you even more art cooldowns, at least mine does, I should say. So if you want more raw damage, you can replace this with a supplementary damage. This is one of those that is definitely replaceable in my current setup, but I am not doing that right now. I also have supplementary damage at level 5, just a really good effect in general. So, supplementary damage is essentially an extra 20% damage on any of your attacks. So, really nice effect to have. It has a separate crit roll, though, but regardless, a very, very good effect. And if you have level 45, which is three supplementary damages, you can get 100% on that 20% damage roll, which is really nice. But even just running one gives you a 42% chance with Sigil Booster, which is pretty good just for one Sigil slot. Supplementary damage 5 plus does exist, but it's apparently extremely rare, so don't count on having it in most situations until you play the game a very long time. So, Aegis 5 plus. This gives me health and quick cooldown. My health is still below 45,000, so I don't have to worry about that. Combined with Tyranny, that allows me to stay below that threshold. And quick cooldown level 5, or level 15 one more time in order to reach the cap on that and get 20% art cooldown. Very good effect to have. Tyranny level 5, this gives me a big attack bonus and also makes sure I stay below the health threshold for um, Catastrophe. And it also has Guts attached to it, that's probably the bigger reason to run it in this situation. That allows me to survive a lethal hit with one health, 
You should pretty much be running those on pretty much everyone. It's just a really strong effect to stay alive. You don't have to lose any momentum or anything like that. And you get to save a revive potion as well. And, or you don't have to waste the critical meter. And it has a 160 second cooldown at this level. So you can have it up a multiple times per fight as well. Really, really useful ability there. I should mention that if you want to run three um, supplementary damage fives, you should also probably replace the Aegis level five to just get all three of them there. Now, you might want some more quick cooldown in other slots as well if you are going to do that, so do keep that in mind. And then my final slot is dedicated to War Elemental, one of the best single-use sigils in the entire game because it makes all of your attacks count as Superior Element, which is a free 20% damage boost that bycasts the damage cap. If you have this, absolutely run this. It is a Curios bonus. Absolutely run it if you do have access to it and you can get one. Very, very good on basically every single character. The final thing of note I almost forgot to mention is that I have Uplift uh, level 11 that comes as weapon trait bonuses just because I didn't really think I had anything better that I could put on there. And also critical hit rate plus 10 based from the uh, MPU bonus. So Uplift gives me more SBA charge gain and the critical hit rates obviously as much as I can in order to hit almost 100%. So the overmastery bonuses that go along with this that I currently have are normal damage cap up plus 20%, skill damage cap up plus 20%. This is the most important skills you can have to increase your damage caps even further. And then I have attack level up plus 700, which is all right, and then health plus 1200, which is, again, all right. Nothing special in those slots. If you can get critical hit rate up with the other two bonuses, that is really nice. I didn't feel like rerolling forever to try to get something better than this when I already had the main two bonuses I was looking for. But regardless, normal attack up and skill damage cap up gives you a lot of additional damage. So those are the main two overmaster bonuses you're going to be looking for. Skybound damage cap up can also be pretty useful as well, but crit rate and the cap ups are the main things you're looking for. So let's talk about skills now. So the current skill setup that I have is pretty much the highest damage output that you can probably have with him. The highest damage skills you're going to get. The first one here, I'm not even going to pretend I know how to pronounce these properly. This is Traumary. This grants strength, which basically allows you to cap basically everything when this is active, even if you didn't have enough strength already or attack power already. And it also deals supplementary damage on hit. Now, this supplementary damage is completely separate from the supplementary damage that comes from your sigils. I believe this is about 30% as opposed to 20%, and it stacks. So you end up getting like 50% additional damage on every single hit if you have both of those effects. So really, really strong buff here. Definitely make sure you are running this. It lasts for like over 30 seconds or about 30 seconds as well. So very, very strong ability. Mocked is obvious. I'm running this because it helps me. Uh, it's good as a gap closer for one thing if you really need it to. But mainly I'm running it because it is the move that I cancel out of in order to use uh, Schlocked. And it's all right to use in some situations as just damage, maybe near the end of fights or if you're just uh, needing to close the gap really quickly and you don't think you'll need to use the cancel for a while or if you think you'll cancel over other abilities. It's a pretty good art. It does a little over a million damage. It's pretty strong. His other two arts I have equipped definitely do the most damage of all of his effects. We got Rotor, Weirbull. This will spawn an AoE uh, Fire Coil in front of Percival. Now, depending on how big or narrow the enemy is, you might not want to use this right next to the enemy because the AoE could go like slightly past the body of it. That can happen with the dummies sometimes, but most enemies are big enough. That shouldn't really be a major concern. Uh, there's interesting properties with the hitbox to this as well, where sometimes you can get a lot of additional damage if the enemy gets hit just right from it, but I'm not really uh, too worried about maximizing that most of the time. Regardless, really good ability, does a lot of damage, it also allows you to attack from pretty far away. I definitely recommend running this. And then finally, your strongest damage art is uh, Ferengen Griff. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that pronunciation. This is uh, four slashes in a row. They all do pretty strong damage, and it also is just a really good art in general. He also slashes a pretty wide radius around him. Definitely run this. Very, very strong art. The other four arts he has are uh, not bad, but they're usually just not going to be useful most of the time compared to the other four arts that I'm using here. Flamin March is his other buff art. It gives uh, buffs to the entire party. Now, most people, if they have their, themselves set up right, are not going to need the attack boost that much. And the defense boost can be pretty nice, but overall it's still not nearly as good as your self-strength boost and supplementary damage boost. So most of the time you're never going to want to run this. Exceal is an okay ability. Petrify is not bad as an ability. It feels like it slows down enemies and lets you kind of wail on them for a bit, which is nice. And uh, it also lowers their defense for a little bit. So it's a nice skill. Sometimes you might want to run this if you want to have more supportive effects depending on certain strategies you're doing, but for most general use, you probably aren't going to be running this super often. 
Zarin Sin is, um, it's, I, I like this ability, it's just not worth running, it's kind of another gap closer kind of ability, it just doesn't really do any damage, but it is on a pretty low cooldown, and it does apply a burn effect, which can be nice, if nothing else. And then finally, we have Royal Authority, this is a big AoE that goes around Percival, it does okay damage, but not as much as your other big damage moves, so that's why I wouldn't really recommend running it in most situations, but all in all, he has some pretty good skills, depending on the situation. I definitely recommend just going with the max damage setup, though, because you can output some really crazy damage if you do everything properly, and especially because I feel like Mocked is the best art for the uh, strategy where you cancel into Schlocked over and over. So that was a lot of information, I know, so let's finally move on to the more practical section of the video where I'm going to showcase a few raid fights and kind of my thought process and how I approach them. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I just wanted to showcase a couple fights. This one I wouldn't say I played super well, but I think it kind of shows some of the general principles of how I would approach many of these fights in most situations. So I do get a hit once at the start there, which was not ideal, but Link Time was active at the exact same time, so I was able to instantly get back into the fray there. And uh, basically what I'm doing is just trying to cancel everything I have into Schlocked, as you might expect. Uh, your Link Attack also cancels perfectly into Schlocked. Now, I use a mock there in order to close the gap, which I don't know if this was the smartest thing to do, because now I have to use basic attacks in order to uh, charge locked here instead of doing the cancel attack. But overall, not really a huge deal, because it doesn't have the longest cooldown in the entire world. So I'm able to still get a lot of damage off with locked anyway. I'm saving my buff skill for a time when I know he's going to be kind of stunned locked for a little bit, so that's why I haven't used it yet. Ideally, after breaking him would have been when we used it, but uh, we kind of get into a situation here where we're... Just uh, got so much Link, we all decided to start using Blue Potion so we can get to 100%. So I'm probably going to save it for Link time in this case now. And um, we have a Vayne on our team, so he's just going to nullify this mechanic entirely once he uses his bubble thing, which is really broken and funny. So I roll into that, and then I start, start charging slot because I might as well, since uh, any downtime in a fight like this where you can't really attack the boss anyway, it doesn't really matter if you have the longer uh, charge time of Schlock because you're still going to be able to get it fully charged anyway before you're able to attack again. So I just run up to the boss afterwards to get a free charge, and then I charge up a... Uh, or I try to uh, use... I just start using arts here because we go into link time. And now I end up using my uh, buff art. Almost forgot to use it, but not really a big deal. And I just use my arts now into Schlock while we're in this active link time. And once link time ends, he's going to try to go to a second phase. So I end up using my... Uh, I charge my special attack, get 100%, and use that before he can go into the phase shift so we can end this fight a little bit sooner here. And I still have the supplementary damage buff active, so this does a lot of damage as well, I believe. And overall, we can just end the fight kind of right here without having to see the phase change of this boss at all, which is really nice. And during the rest of this fight, I just do a bunch of mocked cancels to uh, get my slocked off as much as possible to make sure we have the damage to kill. And now that we're at this point, I go ahead and uh, use mocked properly because he has 3% health left, I believe. So it doesn't matter too much. Actually, I don't even use it. I thought I did. But regardless, he was at such a low health value, I just try to get as much damage off as possible there. Now I'm going to showcase a Proto Baja when I kind of had knew the character a bit more and like finally had everything maxed out. So my strategy here at the ad phase here is let my allies take the cannons and uh, I just kind of go around and uh, attack everything. So uh, fully charged Schlock will one-shot these things, but I start using basic attacks instead because um, that'll give me more uh, SPA gauge. So since these aren't really dangerous anyway, I just use my basic attacks to make sure I can uh, get more SPA gauge before uh, certain thresholds in the fight. Not really a big deal, regardless. Uh, once all the adds from the first phase are gone, I go to the cannon to make sure that we destroy the orbs on the other side. I don't have to deal with those AoEs. I think Bluns had already destroyed them, though, because while I'm waiting for them to appear, nothing comes, and then the uh, next part of the ad spawns, so I guess I just completely missed it somehow, which is kind of funny. And then after we destroy uh, these crystals a little bit more, then the actual crystals appear that you have to DPS check. And uh, Schlocked, as you can imagine, just basically one-shots these. The only one it doesn't one-shot is the one, if those giant big one that appears in the center when it does the fire AoEs on the ground, but regardless. During this phase, when the last crystal is about to be destroyed, I activate my buff art because it has a like a three second wind up time, but that can tick while you're waiting for the cutscene to play out. So you can just have it active during this phase here and just kind of wail on them really quickly to get a bunch of damage and get up to that 83% threshold. You can also reserve your mocked cooldown for later and also have that so you can cancel out of it whenever you need it as well. So I just use my other arts and just locked in the meantime. Skyfall comes out and the real fight begins now. Uh, not really a big deal, though. During Skyfall, you can also charge uh, Slocked. 
because he's going to come up to the left side of the ship, so you can get a lot of additional damage on him if you just kind of sit on a charge here and wait for him to come up. So that's exactly what I do. Uh, I do not go for a cancel there because link time was almost up, so I just get the link time buff instead. So I get another slocked off of that. And then my uh, spiral tor fire tornado move, I don't remember the name of it this time, it's a German name. I use that afterwards to get a little bit of additional damage while I can. And then I go back to just holding down a schlock to charge because another crystal is about to appear. This is the one big one in the center. I get some big damage off of it. I dodge the AoE on the ground and uh, go ahead and charge my, uh, use my buff art again to make sure I have that up when he gets on the ship. So at this point, uh, we go for the link attack. Once again, that gives you a slot charge. And now I'm just going to start canceling mocked when I don't have uh, cooldowns. So I have the fire tornado again, so I use that. And then I'm going to start canceling out of mocked and using uh, schlocked. And if I fail, then I'll just use basic attacks because it's a little hard to see with the camera here, so I'm never exactly sure if I'm doing it properly or not. But regardless, usually if you see the stout heart buff, you know you've done it right. So not really a big deal. And once he gets up, I use uh, SBA. This is the optimal time to use this to make sure he stays down longer. Now, if our team had a little bit more damage, we could have had a really, really fast fight here. But uh, we were just lacking a little bit, which is going to be really funny in a second. So what I end up doing after this is uh, I save some of my big damage moves because uh, we do a two burst here to keep him kind of stunned longer. The other allies are going to use their two burst afterwards. And uh, after this, what we should have is link time. So if we can get that SB, that link gauge up before he runs away from the ship, we'll be able to activate link time immediately after these specials. And ideally, if you have enough damage, if your team has enough damage, you can end the fight. We did not quite have enough damage here. If I had been running one more supplementary damage on uh, my character, we would probably had enough. Because I don't think I was actually running any in this fight. Because I was just being uh, running a different setup here. But regardless here, you can kind of see how the strategy works here. We got him to 1% uh, before he ends up running away from the ship, which is really tragic. And now that we have link time, cooldowns come up way faster, so I can just kind of spam arts a little bit more here without having to worry. So I just kind of alternate uh, my four slashes and my fire tornado. And we get him to 1%, which is really unfortunate. But we do end the fight a little bit after this, because he comes back to the ship to kind of like claw it. So we're able to get the last 1% there. All in all, though, a uh, really fun character with enough damage, you can easily do a sub three minute fight here. Uh, we probably would have gotten it with a little bit more damage, like I said, on the rest of the party, but uh, you probably want some more specific setups to uh, guarantee that. Maybe have a bunch of really high DPS characters if you're going for something like that. Regardless, though, uh, great, great character, has a ton of damage and is really, really fun to use. I hope this guide was able to teach you something. Please be sure to leave any feedback or questions in the comments below. I'd love to know how I can prove these guides in the future since I'm still pretty new to making content on this game in particular. And if you did enjoy, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and please support all of my future guides on this game in the future. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you're still on the fence about this game and don't have it yet and somehow made it this far in the video, please be sure to pick it up. It's a fantastic, really fun multiplayer game with a lot of combat depth, and I'm enjoying the content a lot in it, and all the characters are really fun to play, especially Percival, who's one of my favorites so far. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon for more guides.